Hello guys, once again it's Matt and today we have another video. Thank you all the members, all the patrons. Make sure to subscribe. We are trying to hit 50,000 subscribers until the end of the year. And let's go guys. So, yeah, uh, we are going to test it out a little bit in a custom battle with a friend here. This, the, basically the new changes for the Sky Flashes, the M7s and all these changes. And talk a little bit about what is different. Well, the first thing, as you notice when I was warming up the missile... It is the angle of basically the larger FOV of the missile. So it's now larger as you see. Does it help a lot? I mean, a little bit. Not really. It doesn't change too much. Uh, these are still PVR missiles as you're going to see at the end of the video. But mainly let's talk about the Sky Flashes. The Sky Flashes are a missile that has kind of a bad name on the War Thunder, right? It is a missile that it's kind of bad. Like really bad. And even the super temp that basically promised to be fixing all the problems, it still was kind of bad. And the buff was a major one, to be honest. Uh, we got a buff on the super temp or in the normal sky flash as well that increased the track rate of the missile to an amazing 44 degrees per second. That is larger than the two largest IR missiles in the game. Um, Largest in the mean the, on degrees per second, obviously. The R60M and the Magic 2. Uh, so, yeah, they are 35. So it is almost 10 degrees more than that. And what does that mean? Well, in-game, it doesn't mean that much. To be honest, the only thing that you can maybe feel a little bit is the ability to change directions uh, or maybe just be able to follow a target throughout a very, very bad turn or just a, a, a difficult turn for the missile to do but the thing is that it is still limited by its aerodynamics and its um, you know physics basically for the f physic of the missile itself right uh it is yes the seeker will be better uh to tracking enemies and it will be better changing directions to see uh, the target and all sorts of stuff like that but still, the missile is limited to the physical limits of the missile itself, right? The aerodynamics of it, the max G of it. And that's why you won't be feeling too much of a difference, you know? It feels kind of the same. And as you see over here, the missile is just kind of missing a lot. I mean, you hit it there, but the first ones, they were just really, really bad launches. And, of course, that was max range shots. Uh, so, yeah. It's still, I don't feel that much of a difference. I still think that uh, compared to the Russians, uh, the, oh, the NATO is a little bit on the back foot on the BVR department. Doesn't mean that the Soviets are the most OP thing ever and it's, oh my God, how OP they are. No, I don't think so. Uh, but overall, in the BVR, the missiles like the R-27, the R-27ER or the E's, right? And even the R24s, they're just more reliable weapons than any Sparrow or Skyflash. And a track rate one won't, just basically won't save it. Um, the Raiders, I mean, the Raiders on the Soviet side are not perfect. And uh, there are some things that needs to be changed as well in there, as well as in here in NATO aircraft. But you will see that it is a lot more reliable. The missiles are just more reliable. The radar is more reliable. So in the BVR, it didn't change much. Okay, yes, these changes help the missile. As you see right there, changing direction a lot. And he almost got the target there. But still doesn't fix it because it has its limitations. So once a target is actually from up close trying to evade you, it means that the missile will try harder or at least the seeker will try harder to actually maintain the uh, tracking ability on it. Uh, but as I said, it doesn't mean that the missile itself will be able to do what the seeker is demanding it to, to right? Uh, and that's why these changes aren't affecting these missiles too much. Um, we are here testing out the normal sky flash. And as you see from long ranges, obviously it doesn't change too much. Uh, the missile just doesn't have the energy. Two cranks in the missile, the, the guy is already like, fine the missile it's not even close of hitting it but see this it's a perfect example right like a 70 kilometer shot you completely miss it uh so it is 
problematic one once you have this type of thing, right? Uh, once you are actually trying to hit a missile from from such a close range and it misses. Uh, here he actually hit it, uh, but because he actually didn't, um, I told him to just turn 90 degrees to see if the missile would accompany uh, the, the the target, right? So it's it's complicated. I don't know. I don't feel much of a difference in the sense of a physical change on the way that it turns, right? Here we are testing out the M7F. The M7F, I noticed uh, some of the changes. Uh, the first one, obviously, is the larger FOV as well. That can help, as I said, in a dogfight, as I'm going to show in the next clip. But uh, for the sense of another change that was made, uh, it, it actually has a little bit more range on the seeker. It's not by much. The max that I, am, they, that I got was like 50 kilometers, 49. Uh, before it was like 40, 40 something, so it feels a little bit better, but it feels more due to the aircraft. Uh, I feel like in the F-14, it is getting those secure distances uh, of a good launch, and in F-16, you barely have a lock on it, so it doesn't matter too much, right? So it's limited on the aircraft, and of course, at these distances, I mean, an M7 will just not have the energy to actually properly get uh, a target. As you see here, try to use as if it was in a dogfight or using the max gimbal limit of the missile of the FOV to actually shoot a missile. And as you see, the missile just doesn't have the speed. Uh, to be honest, that's the main problem with the U7F. It takes too much time to actually be able to turn a lot and get people. Uh, this can be used with the M7E and it will have a better effect uh, just because the extra acceleration. But it's not by much as well. It's 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 not a very fast accelerating missile, right? So uh, specifically on the M7F, right? So it's nothing too crazy on it. Uh, so just for you to know, yes, it does help, uh, but it's not nothing like game changer. Uh, so yeah, overall these changes were yeah welcomed. If the game is becoming a little bit more realistic, but they don't change the fact that, as I said. Still, the Soviets have the upper hand on the BVR due to the more reliable missiles, which means that I think we need better AIM-7s. Uh, maybe AIM-20s if they actually make other changes that I'm already going to talk about in another video, but uh, maybe at least the M7, uh, AIM-7MH, AIM-7P, they are from the same kind of era than the, uh, than the, um, the name... Uh, R27ERs, right? Uh, they entered in service around the same era of 1987, basically. So, yeah, it can be a help. But even with that, I still think that the Soviets will be, have the upper hand. But anyway, hope you enjoyed. And I see you guys on the next one. Bye, guys. See you.